Uh, Rick Dempsey now, Mike Bordick, Madison Analyst. Mike, uh, when you look back at those 52 strikeouts, that was a lot for a three-game series in Houston. Well, it, it sure was, and I think the Astros caught the uh, Orioles at the right time. The Orioles were kind of free-swinging. They didn't really see the ball very well at Minute Maid Park. Uh, tough glare off the outfield glass in left field. The roof was closed for that series, yeah, and the Orioles were free-swinging indeed. You know, Buck talked about the power arms of this Astros, but they were keeping them off balance with the breaking balls and the change-ups. This is a fast ball hitting team. These guys were commanding their off-speed pitches. Most of these strikeouts curve balls down in the zone. So the Orioles are certainly going to have to bring up the off-speed pitches. Top of the zone where they can hammer them. It's a power hitting team. They've got to look up in the zone, take advantage of mistakes. But they're swinging at a pitcher's pitch down. They're going to have problems again this series. And uh, it's not a three-game set against the Astros. It's a four-game set. So uh, making more contact obviously is going to be important if the Orioles want to get back on track. But I think just in general. I mean, their offense kind of been sputtering since the All-Star break. So getting, making more contact, putting some pressure on the defense is going to be crucial this series. They really have to start turning it around offensively. You know, Mike, in that three-game set where they set the record for 52 strikeouts, and you saw that replay just on television, there wasn't one hanging curveball in every single one of those strikeouts. Every single one of them was almost in the dirt, perfectly in the catcher's mitt. It spent the least amount of time in the strike zone that I have ever Ever seen a streak like that before of nothing but curveballs right at the bottom of the knees. It was totally amazing that their pitching staff could all get in that kind of a groove for that long and throw that many good curveballs. I'd take every single one of them into a game with me. I could stretch those out for half a season <laughs> and get a lot of good outs. It was amazing. It really was. Mm -hmm. When you look at the uh, starting pitching matchups for game uh, one here, you got Kevin Gosman pitching tonight against uh, Joe Musgrove. And, uh, Mike, when you look at Gosman, he pitches far superior here in Baltimore than he has in the road, but he doesn't get a lot of run support on the road also. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I think uh, a few more runs would certainly help Kevin Gosman's psyche. I think it's all about confidence at the major league level. And, yeah, he has, he's gotten under four runs this year. So uh, it would be nice if the Orioles' offense could break out. But I think Kevin is so close. His last outing, he was... Was like inches it seemed away maybe one or two pitches from having a, an awesome ball game he ended up with six walks maybe trying to be a little too fine and I think Kevin's at that stage where he's a little bit in between he's either getting too much of the plate with his fastball or not enough and it leads to walks so he's right on that edge right now but certainly big enough stuff to where he can carry the steam uh, the rest of the way through you know he's also been in a situation and you hit on it Mike too at the same time with no run support you know you're out there trying to be creative you can't can't be creative. Sometimes you have to throw back to back to back fastballs in a certain situation and he's getting hit. You know, it isn't a matter of him not having good stuff, but he's got some of the craziest best fastball in the American League at 99 miles an hour. You don't see any starters out there with that kind of stuff. A very good change up and he's working on the curveball and it's really not bad half the time that he goes out there. It's a pretty good curveball, but trying to find out situations to throw the off speed stuff in is very, very difficult when you cannot afford to make a mistake. You don't want to get beat on your third best pitch. You really don't want to get beat on your second best pitch. So it really comes down to the fact where you're going to place your fastball most of the time. The problems that he's had, two strikes and no balls, given up a lot of hits so far this season, that's inexperience. He just has to learn how to pitch in situations against tough hitters. And this guy's going to take off like you've never seen. He's one of the best right-handed starters in the American League. I'm sure everybody in the league would love to have this guy. Mike, thanks for stopping by for a few moments before you join Jim Hunter for the game tonight. First of four, that's uh, Mike Bordick joining us.